looking at this box, you'll be forgiven for thinking it contained a DMR radio. I was certainly surprised when it arrived because I haven't ordered a DMR radio. Here it is, digital mobile radio, it says, made in China. And over here we've got the uh, features on the box. Digital analog compatible, dual time slot, dual band. Got an Ambi 2 vocoder, digital signaling function. So all in all, um, I was wondering whether I had mistakenly ordered the wrong thing. But I'll just show you what we've actually got here. And what we've actually got is this. And this is a Bowfing BF1802L. So what's different about the BF1802L? Well, it's a dual-band handheld. And there's plenty of those around with the uh, Bayafeng name on. This does have some particular differences, I guess, to most of the radios that I've seen. The first one, and the one that struck me, was that here we have um, a tuning knob or an encoder knob. So if we turn this, you can see we're on the bottom VFO at the moment. We're stepping up and down. So as well as the uh, traditional uh, up-down keys, we've got the, the tuning knob. Um, you'll have already seen, of course, that it doesn't have the standard LCD display. It has the, uh, they call it a colour display. I suppose there are a few colours there. But you've got the back, uh, uh, the black, white. Uh, you've got the black background and the white uh, numerals. It's fine in this light, but I don't really like these displays because in strong sunlight or even medium sunlight, they're quite difficult to see. On the side of the radio, we've got the PTT and then we've got three push buttons or three side keys separately. Whether these are programmable or not, I don't know. I've had a quick look online. I cannot find software for this. I did see um, a video from another YouTuber and he did appear to have programming software for this radio but I can't find any online. So I'm still looking into that. So any programming at the moment will have to be done from the keypad. Um, what programming lead it takes, that's another question. Um, we've got the standard uh, Kenwood style connections there. So I'm guessing one of my Bowfeng uh, leads will probably fit that if I can find the software to go with it. On the top of the radio, as well as the uh, encoder control here, we've got a um, combined volume and on and off switch. We've got an LED for receive and transmit. Of course, it comes with a flexible antenna. At the rear, we've got a fitting for the belt clip. And of course, a belt clip is supplied with the radio. Uh, just remove the battery. So the battery just slides off. There's no screw on this battery. Um, as you'll see here, um, it's listed as a BF1802L with a 5 watt transmit power. Allegedly tri band, so you've got 200 to 260 megahertz uh, transmit, as well as uh, the traditional 2 meters and 70 centimeters frequencies and the battery is a lithium ion 7.4 volts 2200 milliamp as I think this is incompatible with any other Bayer thing I've got this battery so <laughs> there are so many different uh, styles and uh, uh, fittings for these batteries comes with a charger drop-in charger but it's not uh, USB-C compatible so although it's a fairly new model, it hasn't got the USB-C uh, facility on it. So that's a quick look at it. We'll um, also see if it actually does transmit any kind of RF on um, 220 megahertz because the, the UV-17 doesn't. I can't see this being any different, but we will try. Okay, so this is the uh, BF-1802. We're going to do a... 
a power test and uh, we'll do it on um, VHF first. You can see we're on 145, 400, 500, sorry, here in the 2 meter band. Uh, the radio's just been charged up. I'm on the 5 watt setting on the meter, forward power, so let's just fire it up and okay, so it looks like we've got over 5 watts there. Let's go up onto the 20 watt setting. And that looks to be putting out about 6 watts on uh, VHF with a full battery. 6 watts, that's not bad at all. Now we're on UHF, 433-500. High power again. Let's just go down to the 5 watt setting on my meter. And uh, that looks to be about 3.5 watts. On uh, Just try and come in a little bit closer there. But three and a half watts on UHF. So, as a final power test, we're going to try 220 megahertz. This is supposed to be a tri band radio. You'll see we're set, uh, we're going to be using the uh, bottom VFO. You can see there's a little red arrow against it 225 0025. I'll just uh, reactivate the display. I'll put it on 225 uh, precisely. So I'll take you back to the power meter. As I say, it's supposedly a tri-band radio. When I had the UV17 on test, I couldn't get any reading on the power on 220 megs. So, okay. So we've actually got just under 4 watts there. So we've got some meaningful power on 225 megahertz. Just under 4 watts. The UV17 was uh, only putting out milliwatts. Just to confirm, we're on 225 megahertz there. We give it one more key up. And there you go. So it does actually radiate some actual power on uh, 220 megs. Right, so I'm going to show you what I think is quite a, an interesting feature of this uh, BF1802L. I haven't seen it mentioned anywhere else. So if you know, um, we'll turn the radio is on. I'm going to press the side key here, the the middle side key, the one directly under the PTT. And you'll see now the radio is in search mode. It says search UHF. But for what I'm going to show you for a moment, I'm going to switch this to VHF. You see it says search VHF. Okay, and I've also got my uh, UV17 here. I'll just show you on the screen. And... Um, that's set on the frequency of my local repeater GB3BC. So when I key this radio up, it's going to transmit on um, 145 decimal 150, which is the input of the local repeater. It's going to transmit with a 94.8 um, hertz tone. So I'll just move that out of the camera. And we'll get it back focused on the, uh, the BF1802. I'm going to key my radio up, my UV17, and it's picked up the signal, 145.150, Okay. We'll try again on UHF. Okay, so now I've got my, uh, I'll just move this out of the way a second. Now I've got my UV17 on 433.300. So what I need to do with the uh, 1802 here, press the side key again to reactivate the search function. It defaults to UHF, so we leave it on UHF because we're on UHF on the uh, the other radio. I'll key up on the other radio. Give it a couple of seconds. And... Okay, it's come up with uh, 4333.0125, so it's 1.25 KCs out there. But I guess it's close enough, 4333.300 we were transmitting on. And we've come up with 4333.0125. Um, and as a last check, you can also do this on 220 megahertz. So, again, I'll uh, reactivate the search function. UHF, VHF, see it's on 200 now, 
that's where it's waiting for a signal and um, let me see I'm going to go for on the UV17 220.0225 now it just happened to be the frequency that was on the radio now this UV17 only puts out milliwatts on, on 220 megs so let's see if the um, the other radio will pick anything up on search and how about that okay bang on the frequency we're transmitting a tone as well 220.0225 and 220.0225 with a tone so that actually works quite well I've tested this um, when I've been transmitting on my home station uh, the antenna for that is obviously outside in the garden and uh, believe you me this radio still still picks it up when this radio is indoors with me it's got a reasonable range on this uh, on this search function uh, much better than for example uh, you may have seen uh, these things it's a little um, frequency meter a little digital frequency meter I'll just turn it on for a second um, it works in a similar way okay works in a similar way but it's much less sensitive this frequency meter you have to have the radio that's transmitting almost next to it 